Today, Teresa and I sit down with Regina and Christy to talk about how to get a mortgage, what to consider when you're buying or selling a home, and what you can do to better position yourself in the market to sell your home quickly. We also cover what you might want to do to help improve your credit to increase the likelihood that you'll be approved for a mortgage. We're covering a lot of information. You'll want to listen in. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Earrings Off. We want to invite you to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. You can find us on Facebook at Earrings Off Podcast and on Instagram at The Earrings Off Podcast. Welcome to Earrings Off. I'm Lou. And I'm Teresa. Let's get started. Okay, we're here today. We are excited. We have with us Regina Day-Lewis, who is a mortgage senior loan officer, and Christy Lomax, who is a realtor and also an associate broker. Both of them have agreed to give up their time to talk with us a little bit about the real estate uh, industry, about mortgages, about buying and selling, and what we need to know as we uh, navigate through those um, waters. Often we've heard it said that um, owning a first home or owning a home is a way for us to not only provide stability for our families, but also a way for us to accrue wealth. And many times in our communities, the numbers bear it out that sometimes um, that's where we sort of fall short in home ownership, there are a lot of challenges for us. So Regina and Christy have come just to share some of their vast knowledge and experience with us so that we can get information to help us better uh, navigate through um, you know, real estate concerns, questions, and to manage that process. So We welcome with us today, Regina and Christy. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. So um, tell us then, how do first time home buyers figure out how much house they can afford? And I'm going to tell you, um, I've sort of been burned on that one time, reached a little too high, (laughs) a little too high. And uh, it was painful. You know, we were eating a lot of beans, a lot of beans. (laughs) Staying in, couldn't go anywhere. I'm going to be very honest. Reached a little bit too too hot, too ambitious. So tell us, how do first-time, and that's the truth, that's the truth. How do first-time home buyers figure out how much house can they realistically afford? Between, and I'm going to use my examples between Christy and I. Okay. Basically, when Christy meets, and they are interested in purchasing, the first thing she does is send them to me, the lender. Really? Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what I do is I ask a few questions credit wise, just to see where they are uh, before I pull a credit report, but I forward them to my website mm-hmm. so they can complete an application. Okay. Along with the application, I ask them to upload a copy of their current pay stub and their W-2 for the previous year. Once I receive that, then I can pull a credit report because that gives me permission to pull the credit and calculate their income and their debts. And that's when we come up with, this is what you qualify for. Before I even send them back to Christy, I ask even if, like you just said, Mm -hmm. um, even though they may qualify to finance 300,000, mm-hmm. I always say, what is your comfort level yeah. with your payment? Yeah, <laughs> right. So yeah. then I will calculate what where there is to get that payment amount. Right. Then I send them back to Christy. Right, mm-hmm. right. And, and that's very helpful because, you know, sometimes we're sitting around, uh, watching HGTV and you're looking Mm -hmm. at other folks and they look like they're moving and shaking and you just sort of feel like that's where you should be. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we have to be mindful of that, that um, we are, like you said, I like that, Regina, what's your comfort level? I wish somebody had asked me that. I probably would (laughs) have 
wouldn't have had to eat so many beans. And <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> you know, I mean, I wish somebody had just said, Lou, what are you comfortable with? Because seriously, it was a stretch. But anyway, this episode is not about me. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> so- so is there a calculation for uh, down payments? I was just going to ask, do first time home buyers have to put down and put a down payment? There are products that you can do that are 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are products that require down payment, but it does give them a down payment assistance. Mm. So um, with the first time home buyer, if there's no down payment assistance, usually you can use uh, three and a half percent um, of, of a sales price. If they're given a hundred thousand, three and a half percent, they will need at least $3,500 down payment. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To calculate what they qualify for. If someone's doing it without reaching out to a lender, usually you will use the rule of whatever their gross income, total gross monthly income you can do 37% of that. And that would be the max they could pay. Mm -hmm. That's not really accurate because that will also include taxes and insurance in that calculation. Mm -hmm. Okay. You mean for their monthly mortgage payment? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's been so long since I bought a house. Somehow I feel like the down payments were a lot larger when I did purchase. (laughs) So (laughs) interesting. Thank you for that. So now are there programs though that help First time home buyers. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, it is. For uh, sure. Oh, yeah. VH, it used to be VHDA, mm-hmm. but they changed their name to Virginia Housing about uh, two and a half months ago. So they have down payment assistance, which uh, it varies. There's three different types of loans that they do to help uh, first time home buyers. Okay. Um, there's also grant programs available throughout the city. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. that will assist with down payment. But regardless of whether it's 100%, most of the down payment assistance programs will require that the borrower put in at least $1,000 of their own funds. Okay, okay. That makes a a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you advise the the first-time home buyer when it comes to the costs involved with owning a home? Normally, when I speak with a first-time home buyer and I'm doing calculations for them, I try to give at least two estimates. Mm -hmm. Um, I will do one with down payment assistance. Um, Virginia Housing also offer um, a plus mortgage, which, you know, requires a repayment on the portion that's added to the loan. Mm -hmm. Now, that particular product comes with a down payment based on credit scores. You know, Mm -hmm. if you... Uh, are anywhere from 620 to 680, you would only get three and a half percent of the sales price. If you are 680 and above, you can get 5% of the sales price. And that's a substantial amount of money Mm -hmm. that can go towards the down payment. So a first time home buyer in a situation like that could possibly come away and not contribute any more than maybe Two to $3,000 mm-hmm. max. And then on my end, when um, Regina sends them back to me and we have our initial consultation, um, there are some upfront, I would say, cost or investment that they would have to make as well that we discussed um, mm-hmm. once in contract mm-hmm. and one being the earnest money deposit. Okay. And mm-hmm. that is usually $1,000 or more. Mm -hmm. Um, just Mm -hmm. depends. Sometimes sellers request a minimum earnest money deposit. Mm -hmm. And that is once the contract is ratified, um, Mm -hmm. you know, so that the seller knows that they're serious. It goes into an escrow account, right? Then they will incur a home inspection fee. Um, Ah. so they need to be be prepared for that within 10 days after the contract has been agreed and signed by both parties. And then there's an appraisal fee that Regina, um, has already worked out on their worksheet that they need to be prepared for. So Mm -hmm. before we even, you know, actually start shopping and searching, they have their figures from Regina. They know what they need to invest once in contract. So those, that's how they know what they need to actually start that process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Well, I'm going to tell you, um, it's been a long time since I 
bought my first home, but the two of you are making my head spin a little bit. So I'm trying to keep yeah. up. But anyway, <laughs> that's, that's, that's my happens. own, that's my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my own ish. That's my own issue is spinning a little bit, but you know, seriously, how many would you say that first time home buyers when they come in, have they done their research just generally? Do they, can they keep up with what you do? They know what to expect because seriously, just speaking from your vantage point point, when people come in, do they know what to expect? Or is this all new to them? They don't know at all what to expect. It's foreign yeah. language. Wow. And it's our job to hold their hand and walk yeah. them through the process. And yeah. um, like we're doing now, like I always tell our tell my clients, our clients, um, I know I just gave you a ton of information. Don't try to, you know, take it all in and remember everything because it is a process. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and you can't, I don't want to say the word cheat the process, but you can't go through one step without taking the other. So it's not like it's going to be all thrown at you at one time, because again, we shop, we go under contract than the earnest money deposit. We can't get a home inspection until the earnest money deposit. So nothing, it's going to be steps in order. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's totally a foreign language. And Regina and I work together to keep our clients educated and in the loop. They have Mm -hmm. to take a first time home buyer class as well. So Ah. that kind of brings them back to, okay, that's what they were talking about. Okay, so that's what the appraisal is for. So they get that information from a few different sources. Teresa and I did an episode recently where I talked about, you know, how when couples first get married and the first thing people want to know after that, they start looking for the baby. But, you know, right after you get married, (laughs) people also start looking for when are you going to get that house? You know, and and a lot of young people now, of course, they get the house and they're, you know, independent and all of that. But I want to say when people feel like you've reached some level of success they don't expect you to be renting anymore. There's this sort of this pressure on you to go out and buy real estate in some capacity. So um, I I think society drives that a lot of times and you have to sit back and ask yourself the hard questions, you know, what can you afford? Is this the right time for you? And what uh, Regina referenced earlier, your uh, comfort level. But um, let's talk a bit about when you're selling your home. How important is it to stage your home? Walk us through that process, Um, you know, removing the clutter uh, and the picture, the issue we sometimes get about removing family pictures or art. Can you tell us a little bit about what folks need to be doing when they're selling their home? Sure. Um, So an initial listing consultation, even before actually visit the property before it goes on market. you know, I ask general questions um, in terms of what needs to be done to your home in your eyes if you were buying it. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times some we only see it one way. But mm-hmm. if you walk mm-hmm. through the door and you were purchasing this home, what would you want to see? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I'll sit, then you'll hear, well, oh, maybe I do need to shampoo my carpets or maybe I do <laughs> need to wow. um, paint my uh, Dallas Cowboy room mm-hmm. back to the gray. Mm-hmm. So, um, yes. The reason for uh, decluttering, for taking pictures down, um, one now we all see HGTV. Mm -hmm. People love to see a nice, airy, clean, line home (laughs) with updates and just be able to picture themselves there, not picture you living there. Because honestly, sometimes clients will say, well, someone lives there. I can't go see that home. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, they, they're selling it. We can go see it. And they were like, oh, I didn't know we could see. I'm mm-hmm. like, yes, that's how people sell homes that are still occupying their house. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you want to present that home as though this is, will be yours. Right. Right. So that's one of the reasons for neutralizing, for taking family pictures down. And mainly the main reason you just want it to be more attractive. But do you come across then, Christy, do you sometimes face resistance with people not you know, realizing that their home maybe needs to be staged or maybe needs to um, some touching up because I'm going to be, this is another full disclosure. When I sold a home previously, 
I had an olive green uh, refrigerator and they went out like 20 years before I put my house on the market. <laughs> and I mean, but the refrigerator was working and you know I don't waste money. So it was just there. And the realtor came in the house and she looked at me like I had lost my freaking mind. She was like, Lou, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I don't even want it seen in here. <laughs> in here when the people come in. So, but do you get that sometimes people having a hard time hearing what you're having to say? Because our homes, you know, we think we've got beautiful homes and we think it's decorated well and everything is just wonderful. And then someone comes in and they're like, uh, no, that's not. Right. <laughs> Tell us about how do you navigate through that with people? Yes, that happens very often. Um, and what I do, I ask my clients, I mean, this market is a little bit more aggressive, but mm -hmm. I've been doing it for a while. So in a normal um, market, I would say, okay, if, it do, if we don't get a contract in two weeks, are you willing to let me do it my way? Oh, uh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So let, let's have some room for negotiation with us. If they're that adamant, like, no, it's going to sell. I know that someone will love this decor. They'll love that <laughs> peach room. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Then I say, okay, if we don't get a contract in two weeks, will you let, let okay. us roll with what I advise that we do? Okay. Okay. I like that. And usually in two weeks, yeah. we have to change some things. Yeah, right. Cause that's, right. that's, yeah, because the uh, olive uh, fridge had to go. So I understand what that you're saying so about funny. that. Yeah. That is funny, Lou. <laughs> Um, so Christy, you mentioned more aggressive market. Um, what do you mean by that? Is that, is that what is now known as seller's market? Is that what you meant by that? Yes. And can you, yes, can it, you, it, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. It's a seller seller's market because we have more, uh, we have more demand than supply. So okay. therefore, and Regina, I would love for her to touch on our upflux of um, applicants mm. <laughs> as well. For She's her shaking her, her head, folks. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, so what, 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 what we have going on now, there are a ton of buyers and we're low on inventory. Mm. The seller is the inventory. So it's their mm -hmm. market because mm -hmm. they're right now they're in high demand and mm -hmm. we don't have the demand. Therefore, we are seeing on average, and this is very real, um, at minimum five offers on one property. Whoa. And wow. I would say most, what? yeah, yes, oh. no, absolutely. And um, on average, most homes are going about 10,000 over list. Whoa. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And those are minimum numbers. I've had emails to come back to me it says my seller went with another offer. We had 43 offers and 67 showings. Oh my wow. goodness. Yeah. That's yes. a great place to be if you're selling. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Not in Richmond. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, why? What's happening in Richmond? <laughs> like Christy said, I mean, the, the, okay. the seller's market and there are no homes available. Okay. The first time home buyers now are a, a home for 180. It's not even available for a first-time home buyer. Oh, that my God. Yeah, up to I guess that's the downfall. And above. And so wow. the first-time home buyer, you, I mean, there you can't afford any more right. than that. And so, right. oh, wow. Yeah. So that is where, um, I don't know, to say how something would change, whether it be minimum wage goes up or, you know, people start getting bonuses. I don't know how it will level out. Um, if it's tough, it's, yeah. it's really yeah. tough. And I mean, because housing prices are really or and have been driven up so high. Yeah. But yeah. haven't we been here before, Christy? No, we have not. No, we've because not seen I think this before. What you're thinking about is the recession, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's mm -hmm. totally different than where we are now. Wow. Okay. Okay. Was yeah, the recession was because this is at the market price, so the market is steady. It's just that now it's going up versus a lot of foreclosures and people aren't able to back because they're not employed or they're. Um, mm. So recently uh, a colleague was complaining that their house was listed too low. Sometimes we hear that. So 
Can you tell us how do real estate agents arrive at a selling price? What are they considering? Okay, so in our multiple listing uh, system, excuse me, we're able to access all of the properties that are active, that are pending, and that have sold in that client's first and foremost subdivision area within one to two mile radius. Mm -hmm. So those are called comparables or when you hear people say comp. So that's what we take. What has sold, what's pending, and what's active in your immediate area And then we look at the square footage. We look at the number of bedrooms and bathrooms. We look at the heating and cooling system. Has there been any um, mechanical updates, which would be, you know, new roof, new plumbing, electrical. And that's how it all compiles in the system. And then that's how we come up with the list price, the suggested list price. Okay. Okay. And uh, generally speaking, Christy, when you share that with sellers, is that do, can they typically follow how you arrived at that? Or is there some resistance to that also? Typically? No, because to be honest, now they're like, yeah, the household down the street for this, I saw it on Zillow. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah. they're already on top of right. what is being okay. sold there, you know, <laughs> yeah. staying yeah. on top of a lot of information them. for themselves. So that's yeah. changed because they have the information. And so they, they can understand what you're saying. Regina, is there... Is there any advantage to shopping around for a mortgage? Yes, to some degree it is. Um, Okay. Lenders set their fees. Okay. So um, some lenders make their money through the discount points, the originations. Some lenders charge an underwriting fee. um, Others don't. So basically what happens is when a person apply for a mortgage and they are shopping you, most of them will let you know. So at that point, you're trying to submit or give them your best shot up front. Okay. Um, I won't play that shopping game because normally when I quote someone, I'm already taking off a lot of money Mm -hmm. uh, because I have the authority to do so. Mm -hmm. So when I have given my best and they say um, SunTrust is offering, you know, maybe an example, I may have offered 3%. With no points, they're getting maybe two and three quarters at SunTrust with two points. Mm-hmm. While I'm giving you no points, there's not much of a difference in the payment. And I can't come down to two and three quarters right. because I we can't afford to give away that type of money. Right. And okay. I've given you my best. Okay. So mm-hmm. they shop basically for rate. Um, some people shop just to see what type of service they're going to get from the lender they're speaking to, uh, which I think is good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes it's based on who can give you the better deal and who you can reach. Mm-hmm. Like most realtors, some of them will give a client three different lenders to contact. Mm-hmm. Out of that three, only one will call back. And that's me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm never too busy to talk to a client. And some yeah. people put their current business in front of new business. A person okay. really make a decision based on the service. Okay. 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 Yeah. So how important is an individual's credit score when shopping for a home mortgage? And if someone's score is low, and can you help me understand what that might mean in terms of how that translates, what would be considered a low score? Is there anything they can do to sort of help with that or, or, you know, help them to be placed in a better position to get a mortgage if they've, you know, done some things in the past, not paid, whatever. And their score, their score, credit score now is, um, you know, maybe low. So how important is it? And then if by chance they have a low score, is there anything they can do to better position themselves for a mortgage? Well, first, I'm going to tell you, you asked five different questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Regina and I are friends, so I'm going to let that go. <laughs> okay. Uh, credit score is probably the most important thing to all of us. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Your credit score right now really take you to different levels of financing, um, for your jobs, mm-hmm. um, even helping your kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. You've got to have a good credit score. The higher the score, the better it is 
rate wise for most people. Mm -hmm. For first time home buyers, the rate doesn't vary that much, even from company to company, because it's set. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us offer basically the same rate to a first time home buyer because it's being um, given to us from Virginia Housing. Okay. The only difference is, is what you pay to obtain that rate. If a client, usually if I talk to a client and they tell me I have low scores, first, I'm going to find out why. Okay. Before I even pull the report. If they tell me I am overextended on credit, then I suggest they pay it down um, to a certain percentage before I even report the report. Okay. A lot of times the only bureau that you can go to and almost get accurate information that will match our bureau is Credit Comma. Okay. okay. So I tell them to go there first. I can either, you can have them send me a copy of it and I can explain what I think needs to be done before I put that hard pull on them. Oh, okay. 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 So um, if, if it's debt related, then I get them to pay it down. If it's a collection judgment or anything like that, I suggest depending on the age of that debt, not to pay it if it's old. Mm -hmm. Usually mm -hmm. if it's an old debt and you pay it, it affects the credit, bring it down. And then we got to wait for it to come back up. So if it's oh, a new collection, you pay it good. immediately because you want that to go away. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can get that removed from the report. I'm trying to think of your other questions. Well, what would be, um, what would you consider like a low score? Is there something that some number that you say, okay, this is low. The most investors require a 620 credit okay. score. Okay. HUD says you can get a loan with a 580, but most investors with a 580 require more money down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The down payment is larger. Mm -hmm. um, usually with the 580, you also have issues with the report as far as maybe there are some open collections that were just posted on the report, and that's going to be a problem. Um, HUD says you do not have to pay off a collection. We can count if you make payment arrangements on it, we can count that debt against you and your monthly expenses that you already have, okay? okay? So usually what I do is I try to make sure that I work with people that have a 620. Okay. Most, if you're a first time home buyer, most of them don't have the extra money to put down, mm -hmm. you know, to, to do an FHA. And even if they could, did have it, they couldn't do a VHDA because VHDA's minimum is 620. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. Um, a low score is to me is anything below a 580. That's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Very helpful. Okay. All right. So for the African-American community, when purchasing a home, are there any red flags that we should consider, you know, that alert us that we are being scrutinized more than any other buyers? A couple of things that I can think of that would relate to that is if they're talking to a lender and let's say you've done your research before you were referred to a lender mm -hmm. and you know for a fact that the rates are two and three quarters to five, three percent. OK, but this lender tells you because you have bankruptcy. Um, your rate's going to be three and a half or four percent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That tells you right there you're being discriminated against. Okay. Um, another thing is if you tell them that you are looking for a three hundred thousand dollar house, you know I'm comfortable with that payment, and they tell you, you know, the max we can, and you know you qualify for the three hundred mm -hmm. because of your mm -hmm. income, and right. you know you have low debt. They said, well, the max you should be able to get or you need mm -hmm. is two hundred. Mm -hmm. or, or, or 250. Mm -hmm. That's discrimination. Mm. Mm. That's discrimination. Okay. Usually I tell someone that may call me that say they are working with XYZ mortgage and um, I pull the credit and I give them a figure that they qualify for. And they said, well, the other company told me I only qualified for 150. Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm uh -huh. like, well, did you give mm -hmm. your pay stubs and your W-2s? And they're like, yeah, but they may like that person. So I refer them to the Co Consumer Credit Protection Bureau. Mm -hmm. And then things change real quick. Uh, really? Yeah. So all you have to do yeah. is make a phone call and tell them what's going on. They'll send out a report or make a call for you and things will change really fast. 
That's helpful. Uh, that's good. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So but those are the two major reasons or the two things mm -hmm. that would make you think that you're being discriminated against. Okay. Yeah, that is some good information. Thank you for sharing that. But you know, there have also been reports uh, in the news about, uh, you know, African Americans when they're trying to get refinanced or, or, you know, get a house that the appraisals are coming in on their existing property lower than, you know, in the surrounding area. There, there's been a lot about that lately too. I yeah. have been in business for a very long time and I have worked at probably maybe eight or 10 different companies mm -hmm. and in my career. Okay. And I have never, ever had a, a problem with appraisers. Okay. Okay. And, That's and good. Even today. That's good, so, Virginia. Yeah. You know, every now and then, I guess you get one or two that, you know, you don't want to use because maybe they're too slow uh -huh. or want to charge more than the amount that any other appraiser charges. But usually when the companies nice. see that that's happening, they're off the list. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm in, encouraged and delighted um, about in our community is so many people are purchasing homes for the first time yeah. and they're um, asking about home ownership and they are doing the work to get their credit, um, you know, repaired and where they need to be. I think that with the pandemic that really enlightened a lot of people to with the, honestly, a lot of people had to leave in 30 days. Their, their landlords were selling their homes. Because right. They yeah. Get yeah. Into this market. So people realize like I've, I've literally been living here for 15 years paying someone yeah. else's mortgage. And in 30 yeah. days I have to go and I could have been having this investment for myself and just even people. And I've had people contact me who were living in apartments and they're like, if anything like this happened again, the fact that I could get it because I'm walking in my hallway when I could be out in my backyard with my children mm. with something that, you know, kind of light bulbs start going off, um, especially in our community. So I, I'm, I'm really excited about that turn. Um, yeah. But I've been in business for 16 years and I mean, we've been buying houses for centuries, mm -hmm. but it's really good to see that um, younger people are, I mean, they're going after it in droves. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's Thank you good. for sharing That's that. Good yeah. Stuff. yeah. All of this has been, this discussion has been rich and full of good information, but I didn't want to end without at least giving you an opportunity if there's something else that you wanted to share before we close. The main thing I think that all of the listeners that are not homeowners need to know is that you're not too old. You are not mm -hmm. too young and your credit speaks volume and you should not be paying rent to someone to own something you live in. You mm -hmm. should own your own dwelling, your own home. Um, it's easier than people think. Um, it's easier than buying a car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, yeah. And and it's it's your wealth. It's It's what you leave behind to... Uh, as a legacy for your family. It, mm -hmm. It's it's the most important step, I think, that anyone should make in their life. And Thank I've been doing it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And neither one of my children lived in an apartment. Mm -hmm. you know, when you No. When, when you leave of, home, yeah. your, your goal should be home ownership. Really? Neither yeah. one? That's impressive, Regine. That's impressive. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's simpler than most people think. I've had recently um, borrowers as old as 70. I even had a 90-year-old borrower because you cannot discriminate uh -huh. based on age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and it, was, it, it was something they've said they wanted to do all of their life. Yeah. And they did it. They did yeah. it. This you know, one thing, uh, another thing I would say too, just for the seniors that may be listening, you can purchase a home or you can own a home. And if things get to the point where you can't make that payment because you are now on a fixed income, mm -hmm. they have programs that all you have to pay is your taxes and insurance and the mortgage is gone. What? So, you know, it, it, it's the smartest thing, the smartest move 
anyone can make. Thank wow. you. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Regina. Yeah, no, Regina just shared, like you said, a wealth of information, but um, like she said, you can do it. It is obtainable. Um, once we hand the keys over, they're like, oh my gosh, like it's done. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. really easy. It's done. So don't let fear hold you back. Um, if there are challenges and things that you have to take care of, set up a goal plan and knock it out and mm -hmm. you will become a homeowner. Wow. So again, it is, it is a big investment, but it's the best investment you will make for wow. sure. Well, I tell you what, um, thank you both so much. That was really, that was such great information. I see Teresa nodding her head because um, this is the kind of information we want to bring to listeners because sure. people, it helps people make better decisions. Um, and so right. that's that's what we want to do. So again, thank you, Regina. Thank you, Christy, for joining us today on um, Earrings Off. And um, we appreciate it. So we wish you well and take good care and have a good yes. evening.